Okay, so I am uh, very happy to have uh, the one and only Richie Kotzen on the guitar channel. Richie, how are you doing in Paris? I'm doing good. It's been a long day of press and yeah. answering <laughs> questions and uh, providing information regarding the winery dogs and uh, my personal life and my records and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's been fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's keep it fun. I was at the Maroc Maroquinry uh, concert yesterday night. It was great. Uh, how was it for you? I had a great time, and uh, the audience was really cool. And you know, that's the best thing when you when you get on stage and you make that connection with the crowd, and uh, they respond to the music the same way you felt when you listened to it when the record was done. I sit back and listen to the mixes, and I'm like, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to do, you know. And you get out there and you're sharing that with people, and they respond to it with the same kind of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. I think that you can't ask for more than that. Mm -hmm. I saw on Facebook that most of the shows are actually already sold out. So uh, one after the other, they are sold out. So it must be pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, I, uh, I'm i just surprised, actually, of, of how well uh, the record's been received. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not to say that I don't believe in the record, because obviously I, I love the record. But when you make a, at least when I go in the studio and make a record, the last thing I'm thinking about is what's happening in the outside world and how uh, that's going to respond. Mm. You know, I just, just I just you. assume I'm in my yeah. own world and mm. no one really gives a shit what I'm doing, you know. <laughs> and then, you know, you put the thing out, you make it available, and uh, as long as you like what you did, that's, that's the uh, success of it. If I make a record and I listen back to the speakers and I'm proud of it and it's what I wanted to get out of my head, I'm done. Everything else is a bonus. And mm. when this record came out... Um, We were just really surprised at, at how well received it was and and people that I never thought would even pay attention to anything that I would be involved in were suddenly like you know texting me and sending tweets out and so it's been it's a good feeling man it's mm -hmm. pretty cool Tell us some uh, interesting stories of uh, what happened during the recording process Well you know the recording process was pretty boring Okay. <laughs> okay, so next question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I gotta say something stupid. Um, well, the recording process was uh, it's interesting because, you know, we had initially we got together and we recorded like song ideas. So, like the first time we got together, we just had like one microphone in the room at my house. I have a studio at my house, and, and Mike got behind my kit and we just started throwing ideas around. You know, Billy was playing through one of my guitar amps and we ended up coming up with like five or six ideas uh, riffs verse chorus bridge and we recorded them and then I ended up messing around with them and and coming up with some lyrics and and uh, then we got together again and by that time we had like eight that we uh, that we worked on together and um, <coughs> I think that's when we decided that we wanted to start making the record. And we started making the record, and then the rest of the record really came together through things that I had in the back burner. Um, you know, when I started this record, I just came off of a long uh, campaign for my last solo record, and so I was about to get ready to make another record. And I decided to do the Winery Dogs. So I had some stuff lying around on the hard drive, and I started playing stuff for the guys, you know, saying, what about this, what about that, and they ended up, you know, liking some of the songs, and some of them we just kind of did, like, the way I had written them, like, uh, Damaged and Regret, I'm No Angel, and then a couple other ones that I had worked on, we reworked, mm -hmm. you know, like, I had Elevate already pretty much written, but the problem was that one part of the song was connected to another song. So it was Mike Portnoy that had the idea of putting them together and making one song. Okay. And so there was some of that kind of Frankenstein stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. put this verse here and this chorus there. And so that was cool, you know, um, to get that input. But then we ended up cutting 14 songs in total. And, and that's pretty much what we're doing live, you know. We, we do all 14 songs and then we do uh, one of my tunes, a piece of it, You Can't Save Me. 
and then we do a song that I wrote when I was in Mr. Big called Shine, and then I have a moment in the set where I just play one of my songs on acoustic guitar. Stand, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we got one cover, we do an Elvin Bishop tune. Mm -hmm. I'd like to sing that shit, so we do that. <laughs> and um, that's it, man. Mm -hmm.